Welcome back. If you are here just joining us, you're watching GVS Morning Extra, and today we are discussing matters that happened at Dagoretti South constituency, and to be more specific, Ngando Ward, <coughs> beg your pardon, where the Precious Talent Academy classrooms uh, collapsed yesterday, uh, killing about uh, at least seven uh, students and injuring another 57. And while we are taking the break, we are asking ourselves, as much as this is within the jurisdiction of the education in this, uh, in this, uh, at this level is under the jurisdiction of the member of parliament's office, that's the CDF, which takes care of building classes and giving out bursaries. But then also, the question is, you know, when you talk about devolution and the devolved functions of, rep you know, representation at the devolved level, why do we have MCAs? As much as they do not have a kitty to work on such, but according to my own opinion or judgment, uh, Rokin, I would want to argue that one would want to argue that uh, the MCA should be aware of what is going on within his ward, either raise it in the county assembly and discuss it there, or elevate or you know, forward this complaint to the office of the member of parliament to cater for such. Why should we wait until our children die? That's when we come out and start pointing fingers of blame and start talking about what measures we're going to put into place. You know, a member of county assembly uh, has a role. Just like the member of parliament in the national assembly. Mm. Uh, the question of education, especially public education, lies squarely on the office of the, of the member of parliament. Member of parliament yeah. Governors and, uh, and the member of uh, county assembly mm. are mandated to to talk about the question of education only in, in, in the level that only talks about ECD, ECD and even training of ECD, ECD teachers. Mm -hmm. That's why even in my county, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Paranya is doing a very wonderful job. You go to in very many schools, he has come up with structures mm -hmm. uh, to address the question of ECD. He has trained ECD teachers mm -hmm. and uh, deployed them in various, uh, various uh, ECD centers mm -hmm. around the county. So here in Nairobi, the only, the only place you can put this MCA mm -hmm. to task mm -hmm. is that this place lacks even an ECD center. As a member of county assembly, you are supposed to represent your electorate. Sure. And in matters of education, I expected to see an ECD center, even one in this region, mm -hmm. even, one. even one. So on that, to that extent, he failed. Mm -hmm. But the question of public schools, from class one to class eight, mm -hmm. because even we, we, the incident that happened yesterday, uh, the, the students that actually were victims well, to this were from, yeah. from class six to class eight. Mm -hmm. This issue lies squarely on the office of the member of county assembly. Mm -hmm. The member of county assembly is given uh, money through the CDF, and CDF was formed in 2003. Yes. Basically, in fact, you remember during that time, there was the question of free uh, public free education memory, yeah. from... Uh, from uh, Mwai Kibaki. Sure. The, the, uh, Kibaki the spirit region. of Kibaki should reign up to today. Mm -hmm. We must have public schools in this region because we cannot be having private schools <laughs> when we have a member of parliament. We cannot be having private, all, all schools in this region being private schools when we have a, a member of uh, a national assembly who but the, but is mandated to ensure that these people get public uh, education it is, it as is, a basic right. It is commonly saying, Rokin, that free is not really free. That one is debatable. How, how free is our, our public education system if we cannot build classes? You know, if, if kids will learn under trees, then how free? What's the definition of free in this, in, in this sense? It means that some... If we cannot provide facilities... You know, it means that so, some of us don't have faith in our institutions, mm -hmm. our public institutions, mm -hmm. and that is very wrong. You know, such a narrative actually supports privatization mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of, of e things, issues, or even uh, in, uh, 
the, 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 the rich having a, a say in each and everything in the society, even in education. Let us not make education a rich man's show. Mm -hmm. Edu we have uh, needy students in this country. And uh, in this region, uh, as you can well see even the structures around the place, mm -hmm. it means that some people in this region cannot afford mm -hmm. paying fees in private schools. Mm -hmm. So the government, much as the question of free primary education is, is, is moot, why would we have other regions having that free primary education, even if it is moot, mm -hmm. and th this region lacks this uh, basic right mm -hmm. to, to, to those uh, ch children mm -hmm. or pupils, pupils in this region? Mm -hmm. Their parents and even them pay uh, taxes mm -hmm. to the government. Mm -hmm. So let us, first of all, uh, establish infrastructure, uh, educational infrastructure, infrastructure in this region mm -hmm. to actually address the question of public education mm -hmm. to these kids let let those ones who are willing to go to primary to private schools mm -hmm. go to private schools mm -hmm. but those ones who can't afford should go to that i went to a public school mm -hmm. up to a certain level before i crossed over to a private school mm -hmm. that one should tell you that mm -hmm. i actually have enjoyed part of the taxes i pay to this government mm -hmm. and that I, I i have colleagues of mine who have actually gone through that system up to today, and they are doing well. So the question of free primary education is de debatable. Mm -hmm. Some students go there and excel. Others don't excel because there are no facilities, there are less teachers, there are, in, f in fact, there is no equipment, the lockers and desks are not enough. The Classes are cramped up. We have class, 80 students yeah, to one teacher. To one teacher. That, that one is actually a challenge mm -hmm. in the education sector. Mm -hmm. That one is a challenge which can only be addressed by government with the other stakeholders mm -hmm. of education, like even the teachers' unions, mm -hmm. the, 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 the teachers, even everybody who is involved in the question of education in this country. Mm -hmm. That one can discuss discussed there. And we can do that to strengthen institutions that actually handle education in the, in the country. And, and that's why one would want to ask, to, to ask Rukin, or rather suggest, should there be an institution then that is mandated in setting the standards of public uh, schools as, as much as we may say we don't have enough resources to cater for all the children as we are giving the free education but at least the basic standards that will allow our children to learn in a decent environment they don't have to be rich yes rokin we don't have to have you know flamboyant classes but what we are saying is decent classes so that we can avoid what we saw here. I mean, children dying in such a situation in an institution that is run by the state, it's really appalling. You know, you know in the last budget, if you read the, the budget 2019-2020, mm -hmm. education was awarded the highest mm -hmm. amount of money in the country. But As, <laughs> you know, education, in fact, took the junk, uh, the junk of the share of the money mm -hmm of that budget. Mm -hmm. It means that we have the, the resources, mm -hmm. but the resources are being swindled somewhere along the way. And you know, if you, if you if, since 2003, you cannot tell me that some students are still learning under tree. Mm -hmm. But they are. That some students, that's why I'm saying. <laughs> but you the reality, tell the reality that, is that they are. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. You can't tell me that. And we are, we are actually, uh, uh, Putting money in this, in we this, have a this, budget for a budget for, for education. This, for education, mm -hmm. students are, are are actually allegedly get, getting bursaries. Mm -hmm. How do you ad, how do you tell people that you you have been uh, allocating money to the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. when some students don't even have schools to attend? They are going to prime private schools to pay a lot of money mm -hmm. just to get an education. Education has become so expensive for some who are paying taxes. So. This thing can only be addressed if, number one, we handle the question of corruption, number one. Number two, mm -hmm. if we strengthen the institutions that are mandated to handle the question of education, mm -hmm. starting from the Ministry of Education r down to the, even the Office of the District Education Office mm -hmm. in the village, mm -hmm. those institutions can actually work hand in hand to ensure that education mm -hmm. is a success in this country. But you know, nowadays, it, it seems like education is not rewarded handsomely. 
because even if if you are a student and 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 your leader is didn't go beyond form four. Mm -hmm. You know, such, I wonder if such a leader can actually empower you academically. But uh, one would only want to judge, you know, that. But then, Rokin, you'll also have to agree with me that some people did not go to Form 4 because they <laughs> did not want to. But then you find smarter people who are actually leading institutions or maybe even running their own businesses or organizations but then who did not have classroom education, but does not mean that they have a less concern or less knowledge on how to, you know, propel, you know, uh, how can I say, formal education or, or classroom education to the coming, upcoming generation? You know, the question of private, uh, running a private uh, uh, business, mm -hmm. that one is open-ended. Mm -hmm. But if... I am an education officer. How can I be an education officer, yet I have no, no clue about education? Mm -hmm. How do you give me a role to run a, a, an education institution when I don't know anything about education? So what we are seeing... What, is the what, spirit? We are seeing what, the what, the, what spirit will you actually try to inculcate in this institution as a leader? So what we are looking at here then in our education system or in the people running the education system is that... What you are alluding to right now is that we might have people who are less educated, who understand less about education, and that's why we are seeing all this. Some are. But also, let me tell you another problem, and, uh, which is ailing the education uh, industry sector, yeah. or sector in this country. Mm. The people in positions of power mm -hmm. have actually made, created all the necessary requirements mm -hmm. to make sure that the public education fails. So that, because they have private institutions, mm -hmm. they have ensured that public education fails so that children go to their private institutions. And that one is very criminal mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. a country that is talking about almost 50 years after independence, that some people want to monopolize education. Mm -hmm. You cannot monopolize education in a country like ours, which is still struggling to be second uh, uh, to, be, to, to be to be to have to, to develop mm -hmm. economically, mm -hmm. it's still a you know it's, it's, it's still a developing the, country. You know, <laughs> somebody said that uh, I think it was Henry Ford mm -hmm. that uh, the the most in fact the most criminal-minded person is not to he who actually takes the life of another person, but he or she mm -hmm. who is given the position of leadership yet he has no vision. Mm -hmm. for the people. Mm -hmm. If you are, you are a leader and you have no vision in matters of education mm -hmm. for your people, mm -hmm. I think you are not supposed to represent those people. You are not supposed to lead them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just want to, 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 to ask the leaders, the leadership of this region, mm -hmm. to up their game, to pull up their socks, and uh, look for solutions mm -hmm. so that they actually help this public that is paying taxes just like me and you and who actually equally need public education in this region. Mm -hmm. Let us not monopolize education in the, in, in the hands of uh, private uh, uh, individuals mm -hmm. who are only there to, 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 to accumulate uh, resources and profits mm -hmm. at the expense of the poor, of the whole police of this region. So, Rokin, if I hear you correctly, then you are bringing up the narrative of cartels again. Of course. And, you know, <coughs> Kenya and cartels, when, I mean... It, there are cartels in every sector in Kenya? Of course. <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. If you, if you investigate in this region, mm -hmm. I'm very sure in this particular region, Fungand, very senior people have private schools. Mm -hmm. People who have been serving in government have private schools in this region, but mm -hmm. they are willing and they don't, they will do anything to make sure that this region ha does not have public schools. Mm -hmm. For example, this school uh, had very poor infrastructure. Sure. But how comes it has 800 students? 800 students. It That's means, a yes. Huge population. In a private entity mm -hmm. in Nairobi, mm -hmm. that one is a huge population of students. It means these students actually have a thirst for education, but they don't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. So some individuals in this region have made sure that maybe the question of public schools mm -hmm. does not come up so that people 
go to their schools. And that's the, the, the issue in this region. Mm -hmm. And it happens all over. Some people frustrate a government, a government efforts, efforts to, put to come up with there. the infrastructure and facilities so that they benefit. And those must yes. be well-connected people because, I mean, the government knows and you, not anybody can just stand on the way of government if government wants to I was so ashamed to see a member of parliament who was given a, awarded 142 million shillings mm -hmm. in the CDF kit because mm -hmm. every CDF is given 142 million shillings. Mm -hmm. how, how do you get 142 million shillings yet you don't have even schools? And education lies squarely under your office. Under the office of the... Surely. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing? Even before you, the leaders before you, it means there are people who are constantly either advising these guys not to come up with schools or frustrating the efforts of public schools in this region mm -hmm. so, that, so that students go to their schools. And that's the truth. But then these are matters that need to be raised, you know, in society. These are not things that one can you know, be quiet about. Why be quiet about it then? My friend, uh, cartels in this country. <laughs> you know, when you speak about cartels. <laughs> but then when we <laughs> give too much credit to the cartels, we, I'm sorry to say <laughs> this, but we want to sound like, you know, our good politicians <laughs> who always blame it on cartels. I I'm mean, not rewarding. Take, for instance, the former governor of Nairobi. He always made a lot of noise about the cartels. Talk about the current governor who is also still making a lot of noise about cartels. Are we going to give credit to cartels and say that cartels have made us not be able to do our job? We must not reward cartels mm -hmm. by praising them. Mm -hmm. That's what we're giving we them. We're giving them more credit than a, is due. A country that uh, follows the rule of law, mm -hmm. a country that has a, a leadership, a firm leadership like ours, mm -hmm. must actually address the question of cartels because they pose a great danger mm -hmm. and insecurity mm -hmm. to the people. Mm -hmm because some of them want to take uh, credit and for, for things they have not done. Okay. Others want to, 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 to loot. Mm -hmm. Others want to even maim for their own selfish interest. Mm -hmm. And that is very wrong. If we have a law that everybody, you know, because the law is not meant for the poor alone. Mm -hmm. The law is meant for everybody. For Unless everybody. if the Kenyan law uh, is divided between the haves and the have-nots, the, have the, have, the haves are not uh, party. Which well, is not the case. Which is not the case. Mm -hmm. So in this region, if we talk, the question of cartels is a reality, mm -hmm. they are there. Mm -hmm. Some people want to frustrate government initiatives. Mm -hmm. And it is, not, it is not a secret mm -hmm. that not just in education, mm -hmm. in the land sector, in all ministries, people have come up actually, we have had various issues on television, mm -hmm over the radio, people claiming that some individuals are frustrating them, even in, in their guest to get justice over even land mm -hmm. or historical injustices. And that's why such those, those people were categorized as cartels, I think, by, by Gidongo mm -hmm. in, in his report. Yeah, yeah. And co that's oh, the former ethics uh, yes. cabinet secretary. Uh -huh. And even he, he, he actually defined the question of corruption, mm -hmm. whereby he, he, he categorized them into two, minor corruption and even uh, uh, major corruption. Major corruption. Yeah, mm -hmm. the grand corruption like mm -hmm. the NYS scandal, mm -hmm. the looting. The anglo leasing. The anglo leasing. So as a country, we have, we have a very, uh, very clear-cut uh, law. Uh, we have the constitution, which is very clear to everybody. But now... These guys have actually come up to frustrate the efforts. And it, it happens all Rokin, over. Rokin, when you look around, I don't know if time will allow us to discuss this, but it's also one of the issues maybe we can discuss in the last uh, remaining about uh, 10, uh, seven minutes that is remaining. Maybe you can just touch on it. The issue of, that is now happening in the coastal region. We have uh, in the coast now a lot of uh, demonstrations. We saw what happened uh, mm. yesterday. and. A, a report carried out, a study carried out by the University of Nairobi revealed that more than 60% of employees working at the container freight stations in Mombasa were sacked over the period that the SGR has been running. And since the government actually decided that they're going to give 100% of the, you know, work to, to the rail, to railage, what do you make of this? These are laws, these are billions of shillings that were invested. SGR is 
the most expensive infrastructure project that the Kenyan government has ever undertaken. I, I've never taken SGR to be a government, our, our national government project. Mm -hmm. I always take it as a Chinese project. Why so? Because it is, it is, it is in China that the policy of one road, one belt initiative came up. Mm -hmm. And that's when we saw the SGR coming up. Mm -hmm. It is not our uh, project. Mm -hmm. It is a project to connect us to China. That's the truth. It is not helping us. It is not connecting the, the coastal region to, to the inland. It is actually connecting the goods from China to Nairobi and to Naivasha and to the inland parts of Africa. That's the truth. That's how you want to look at it, Rokin. For me, <laughs> for me, let me tell you one thing. Yes. If it were a Kenyan project, uh -huh. you know, I... I, I like uh, I like uh, people who talk reality. Mm -hmm. Let us not discuss the question of modernity mm -hmm. without the development. Mm -hmm. You know, in Kenya or in Africa, we discuss modernity without development. Without development. We have phones, yet we cannot even assemble the phone. Mm -hmm. We think we are developed by having WhatsApp. <laughs> we are not. That one is modernity without development. Having infra like SGR, mm -hmm. we are. Development is empowering the people, mm -hmm. empowering the local people. Mm -hmm. If you can suck 60% of the people in the, in the freight mm -hmm. stations, mm -hmm. if you can actually make the drivers mm -hmm. of these trucks jobless, mm -hmm. if you can make the people who actually benefit from these, these, these containers mm -hmm. jobless, mm -hmm. and you, you know there is only one driver in this year, so you are sucking 60% of the people to reward one driver. What are we, uh, yet we, it is very clear that this GR is not actually even paying itself. Mm -hmm. It has sure, been very actually it made a lo it made a loss. I think still according to <coughs> one of the studies is that it made uh, a ten billion loss the this year the in the first year of operation. This GR was a bad idea, mm -hmm. and it is going to haunt us. Mm -hmm in the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't actually uh, uh, look at this issue mm -hmm. in an in-depth manner, mm -hmm. we are going to incur losses. In fact, we have not incurred losses. And we s remember, these are machines that is depreciating. And what can be done now, Rokin? Because before even the project, when the project was being pushed, there was, uh, you know, the economist, David D, of course, who came out strongly and even dared speak publicly and say that this thing or this project had no feasibility study. But the no. government still went on. If and an economist like David D speaks against such a project, mm -hmm. you must actually put your ears on the table and listen. Mm -hmm. Personally, I feel like, you know, I remember the, when this issue of SGR came up, we saw leaders running to buy land. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the, in, the, in the beginning, we have a railway line that comes to Nairobi, mm -hmm. the railway station. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they u use that place, which is public land, mm -hmm. to construct this thing? They incurred huge expenses for the people, for the taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. because leaders ran to buy land. Others went to grab, mm -hmm. so that they can get a share of this money, to just incur expenses. Mm -hmm. That one is number one, the question of corruption. Secondly, such a project must actually be looked at in a very collective manner mm -hmm. and in a manner that is sustainable for the future. You cannot tell me that this thing is coming to develop the country. Then you suck the very people. Who are now supposed to yes, benefit from the same. From the same. Mm -hmm. So how, how are you helping these people? Have you given them an alternative uh, way that they are going to earn a living? Mm -hmm. As a country, let us not just suck people. Retrenchment is actually normal. But let us give people an alternative way to actually earn a living. Instead of just laying them off, then leave, leaving them to just wander around. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why I'm saying that the question of SGR is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. The question of SGR is not a Kenyan project. Mm -hmm. It is a Chinese project. And it is not just happening in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It is happening all over in Zambia. In every yeah, it it is in a one-belt, one-road mm -hmm. initiative that... Uh, in Indonesia. Yeah, let us not own up an, a, a project that is not ours. But what can we do about this? Because, I mean, right now, China is the biggest lender to the African economy. I mean, there's no one pumping in development money more than China in Africa this time. And it's a fact. I, I, I believe in Dambisa Moyo's uh, book, mm -hmm. Dead Aid. Mm -hmm. Dambisa Moyo 
wrote a book and actually inspired me. She inspired me mm -hmm. about uh, about aid in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not a, a proponent of aid. I don't su support uh, an outward, inward approach to development in Africa. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can help Africa grow is intra-African trade. Mm -hmm. If we improve our intra-African trade mm -hmm. and leave alone the question of foreign aid, mm -hmm. leave alone the question of even military aid from abroad, mm -hmm. concentrate on developing our industry, mm -hmm. concentrate on actually uh, doing trade with Uganda, mm -hmm. with Egypt, mm -hmm. with Nigeria. Oh, 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 oh. If we improve our intra-African trade mm -hmm. and have an inward, outward mm -hmm. approach to development, mm -hmm. we will develop. For example, in the Congo, in the 1960s, during Patrice Emery Lumumba's time, mm -hmm. the USA, under the CIA, mm -hmm. gave in their, 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 their aid in the guest of actually helping the Congo crisis. Mm -hmm. The Belgium government did so. But wh what were they after? Were they after developing the Congo? Has Not Congo really. developed? Not really. Not really. Mm -hmm. They were after the oil. And mm -hmm. you see... Such question has actually led people to their graves, talking sure. about sure. the truth. Mm -hmm. They have led people to their graves. Even, even Patrice Lumumba was himself. slaughtered and was killed. You know. Foreign aid is not about helping Africans. Mm -hmm. Because I, 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 you know, in the first place, even this money sometimes does not trickle down to the people. It remains in the pockets of the leaders. As we finish, and, and I think Africa is going there because the establishment of the free trade area actually brought about 50 countries together, although it took a long time, but now it's opening up, and I believe that would help develop the intra-Africa trade that you're speaking about. Maybe in your final remarks, Rokin, because mm. our time is up, as, as you conclude, maybe you can just give us a point My on that. My conclusion, I think it is time our African leaders, and even Kenyan leaders, because we are part of Africa, mm -hmm. listen to experts. Listen to experts. We, it, is, it, it is actually... A, ideal to actually listen to the people who understand the question of economics, mm -hmm. the question of development. We should not discuss modernity without development. Mm -hmm. Discussing uh, SGR without sustainability with the locals mm -hmm. is actually very bad. It's a it's bad idea mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rokin Okot, for finding time to come into the studio, of course, as always. Viewer, we have come to the end of our program today. Thank you very much for staying tuned. For comments, suggestions, or opinion, you can send that to our email address, info at gbskenya.com. Our SMS line is 21144. Remember to keep the conversation going on our hashtag, that's GBS Morning Extra. My name is Timothy Omodi. Do you have yourself a lovely day. Kevin Yariki is up next with the Sports Extra. For me, it's bye-bye for now.